and he's come up with a great way to get his pupils excited too. We've contacted a French school, set up a competition similar to the 18th century when the French and the English were at war and observing the Venus transit and we're going to compare our timings to see who can be the more accurate. The school in France is the Externat des Enfants in Nantes. Chris's opposite number, Monsieur Michel Raymond, took up the challenge gleefully and launched an equally intensive training program. Game on. And I've got Chris Park and Monsieur Raymond on the phone. Chris, how did you get on? We had a great morning, very clear skies, and our third contact time is 12.03. 12.03.54. OK, Lucy, you've got that. Can you punch that in? And in a minute, we'll get them a distance. And how was it in France, Monsieur Raymond? Que... Comment ça va? Hello, Monsieur Raymond? Uh, I gather, unfortunately, we've lost our phone line, but I gather it was cloudy in France and they were unable to get any measurements at all, which is really sad. It's a great pity. We thought there'd be a great competition and sadly it was a, a bit of a walkover. But what we're going to do is to give the French school our own solar scope as a consolation prize, because I'm sure the sun will shine on France. <laughs> OK, Lucy, have you got a distance to the sun for Chris? We have got a distance to the sun and it's coming out to be... 147 million kilometres, which is not far off the actual distance that we think the sun is away from us. About 92 million miles, yes? That's right, about 92 million miles. I'm doing right. it in my head, but it's very close to the right thing. That was brilliant stuff. Thank you, Chris. That was terrific stuff. Please thank all your pupils. They've obviously done a great job. Okay, thank you. Right, well, that's about it. Venus will finally leave the sun in about 10 minutes. Let's go quickly to Much Who, where Vanessa is chatting to astronomer Robert Walsh, one of the organisers of the event there. Vanessa. Thanks, Adam. Robert, you've spent an enormous amount of time and effort setting up today. How's it gone for you? It's been exceptionally special, really. It's been a wondrous event to be here at the Horrocks house and actually observe the thing that Jeremiah Horrocks saw back in 1639 and to see it right here, right now. But this isn't the only event, is it, today? No, we actually have organised an international conference. We've had 100 professional astronomers, experts in their field, from 20 countries actually travel to Preston to talk about science for this week, and the attraction has been to follow in Horrocks' footsteps. So what's been the legacy of not only today, but this week-long event? Well, we very much want people to get turned on by astronomy, an opportunity for the people to be inspired about what astronomy really is, to learn about Venus, the Earth, the Sun, our solar system, the universe in general. And this transit has really allowed us to do that in a very special way. Well, it's been incredibly successful here. You can see everyone from babes oh, in arms right the way up to more senior members of, of society. Yeah. So, do you think you've achieved your mission? Very, very much so. I think everyone has learned a bit about Horrocks, a very special character in, our, in, our, in British history, but also about the transit of Venus itself. And I think everybody realised that since this is such a rare event, they've actually been part of something which is very, very extraordinary. Um, there's another transit, of course, in eight years' time. Have you got any sense now about where you're going to be for that? Well, in eight years' time, it could be somewhere in the Pacific, maybe in New Zealand, for example. But in order to get the next one in the UK, we're going to have to wait for 243 years, so I don't think I'll be part of that one. Well, it's certainly a long wait, but uh, thank you very much, Robert. And in the meantime, back to you, Adam. Thanks, Vanessa. Now, don't forget to watch or record our programme this evening on BBC Two after Newsnight. Until then, here are some more of those beautiful images of the transit. Actions seem to do the trick, all of them searching the skies for a tiny black dot. We're now nearly four hours into the transit and here is Venus making its leisurely progress across the face of the sun. The last time anyone witnessed this was in the Victorian era. The world's first electric streetlights were just being installed and the Tsar still ruled Russia. This was a global event. The pyramids of Egypt provided a spectacular backdrop. This was Tokyo. Wherever people gathered, they gazed in wonder. Cloud cover got in the way at times in Belfast and parts of northern Britain. 
In Sheffield, the transit was projected onto TV screens and broadcast via the internet. Back at the Royal Observatory Greenwich, a moment for astronomers to savour. What do you think about the turnout we've had here today? It's an amazing event. I mean, the weather couldn't have helped us more. There are thousands of people that just to come to look through the telescopes. Um, so it must go down as one of the greatest events that's happened here at the Royal Observatory. And maybe some of the younger ones will be switched on. It'll be their spark they need to become the scientists and astronomers of the future. And there's no doubt it was an inspiration for many. I really would like to be an astronomer now because I think this is truly amazing and I would really like to like, get to know more about the sun and the planets and everything. We'll never see it again in our lifetime, so it's pretty cool. All good things come to an end and finally at 12.23, Venus once again hid herself away from public view. Now, if you missed the transit of Venus, bad news, I'm afraid. It won't be visible again from Britain until 22 47. Sean. OK, Fergus, we'll see you then, maybe. <laughs> now let's have a look at the time. It's just after a quarter past six. A reminder of tonight's top stories. The man accused of planning the Madrid bombings has been arrested. And in the next few hours, the UN is expected to agree on a way forward for Iraq after the handover of power. And coming up later in the programme, England footballers face their first training session in Lisbon and play down any fitness fears. And on South today, the connection... For 13 years. I shall miss it then. <laughs> 93 million miles away, the sun blazes down across the south. A tiny black dot comes between us and it. Venus is moving across its face. Astronomers from Southampton University set up a telescope for students at Cantel Maths and Computing College to witness the spectacle, as well as more humble handheld filters. Well, it's my birthday today, so I thought it was a really nice present. But it's quite cool, I think. It's really, like, amazing, really. I was like, whoa. Transits of Venus happen when the planet lies on a straight line between the Earth and the Sun. Venus appears as a black dot passing across the surface of the Sun. It's very, very rare. The phenomenon was last seen in 1882. A long time ago, the transits of Venus used to be important in determining distances in the solar system. But now there's other um, aspects to do with the atmosphere of the planet that's of interest. Well, everyone's making the most of this and for a simple reason. It will be visible again in the year 2012, if you happen to be in the Pacific region, that is. Thereafter, it won't be back until the year 2117. The weather was perfect for Venus gazing, a cloudless sky almost too hot, but the temperature was an estimated 0.1% less than it would have been had Venus not got in the way this morning. It has been a simply glorious day to be out in the sunshine. Hugh Kirby in Southampton for Meridian Tonight. And will it be another glorious day tomorrow? It's a big event. Our science editor Lawrence McGinty now on a case of 2004 a space odyssey. At the spiritual home of astronomy, the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, they came to see a truly unique event, with high-tech telescopes, with low-tech viewers. Young and old came to see the planet Venus passing across the face of the sun. At 6.19am, our specially adapted camera showed the black outline of Venus cutting into the solar disk. No one alive today has ever seen this before, because on average, it happens only once every 121 years. It won't be visible from Britain again until 2,247. And none of us will be around by then. It's brilliant. It's exciting. I love it. What do you think? It's nice. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's incredible. <laughs> Look, I'm absolutely delighted. It just shows how popular astronomy is, how people are absolutely captivated by events like this. You know, you've got a, a planet moving in front of the sun for the first time in 120 years. Well, Venus has done this anyway. And, uh, you know, hundreds of people are here to watch it. And not only here, all around the world they were watching. In the Southern Hemisphere, they're lucky. They'll see it again in 2012, but it won't be visible then from Britain or from Greenwich. 
All morning, people have been queuing here in Greenwich to catch a glimpse of the transit of Venus across the face of the Sun. It's not such an important phenomenon nowadays, scientifically speaking, but it's crucial for the public relations of astronomy and science in general to get people looking down a telescope like this one, perhaps for the first time in their lives. Morris McGinty, ITV News in Greenwich. The prize is yet to be seen. Rebecca Cooper and the markets, the FT100 share index closed up 13 to 4,505, while in New York, the Dow Jones also closed up 31 to 10,422. In London, against the euro, the pound rose against the dollar, the pound remained unchanged. Tomorrow morning's front pages, the independent, the reunited nations, the powerful countries have joined forces to tackle the tragedy in Iraq. Onto the Financial Times, uh, US will press G8 to relieve Iraq of its £120 billion debt. And as we said, it's in return for debt relief for the poorer countries. Takeover panel forces screen to clarify Marks and Spencer's bid. Onto the Times now, look carefully, you won't see this in Britain for another 243 years. That's Venus crossing the sun. Postal bar mar marred by fraud on Thursday's elections. UN backs Iraq handover of power. And moving on to The Guardian, let the poor smoke, says the health secretary. And the MOD admits a big rise in Iraqi civilian death inquiries. And finally, on to The Sun, too posh for England, Victoria Spurns Wise Hotel for private villa. Well, that's all for Newsnight tonight. There's round-the-clock news coverage on BBC News 24, which you can find on cable, satellite and Freeview. John Sopel will be back with more tomorrow, but until then, we leave you with pictures of this morning's once-in-a-lifetime astronomical phenomenon, Venus's crossing of the sun. Good night. This Saturday at 4.30, Portugal take on Greece in the opening game of Euro 2004. Live on BBC One, BBC Radio 5 Live and interactive on BBC I. Euro 2004, the beautiful game by the greatest artists in Europe. If you or someone you know lived or fought during World War II, then why not add your memories to the People's War website? at bbc.co.uk slash ww2 or call 08000 150 950 for more information. Now on BBC2, a chance to see today's highlights of the once-in-a-lifetime event of the transit of Venus. Just after sunrise, 8th of June, 2004. We're about to witness one of the rarest events in the solar system, a transit of Venus. The planet Venus is going to pass between the Earth and the Sun. It's something that no one alive today has ever seen. Welcome to Stardate. The last time Venus passed between the Earth and the Sun was more than 120 years ago, in 1882. As one of the observers said then, to have seen even a part of a transit of Venus is an event to remember for a lifetime. Only five have ever been seen by human eyes, and no one has ever seen a complete transit from this country. But it's not just a rare event. In the past, it was the best way to find out the distance to the Sun. And that's something we're going to try, with help from you, the viewers, later today. Here at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, astronomers and enthusiasts gathered at first light to mark out a comfortable place to view from, check their kit, and pray for clear skies.
the most important place in transit of Venus history is a small village called Much Hool near Preston, where Vanessa Collingridge also made an early start. We're here because this is the very place that the first transit of Venus was seen by human eyes. Now, the current owners of the house are celebrating by throwing a bit of a garden party, and they've been joined by astronomers from all over the world. And just in case of bad weather, we've got a crew out in Egypt with astronomer Paul Roach. We've been here in the Red Sea resort of Sharm El Sheikh for about four days setting up now, and we haven't seen a hint of cloud in the sky, which is just as well because a lot of people have come an awful long way to see this event. We have 300 amateur astronomers gathered around us, some around the pool area, as you can see, setting up. And some people have secured themselves a prime location over by the bar. Great place to be, given it's going to be around 45 degrees at midday today. The reason we're here is the Stardate Telescope. Now, this is a typical nighttime telescope that we've adapted to allow us to observe the sun. We have a very special mount here. This is going to allow us to track the sun as it rises and sets during the course of the day. So we always have the sun in image. At the front of the telescope here, to tone down the harsh sunlight, we have what we call a hydrogen alpha filter. This is going to deliver really, really high quality images. Those images are being gathered by a state-of-the-art camera down here, which is going to send the data back to you through the cables, courtesy of our imaging experts over here, who are going to make sure the image you get is as good as it can be. And then we have about a ton of kit resting on the roof here, which is going to give that image back to you through the satellite to Greenwich. And the technology is working perfectly. Now, this is Dr Lucy Green. You're a solar astronomer, is that right? That's right. So you know all about this stuff. I've been waiting for this event for so long. <laughs> You're excited? I'm very, very excited, that's right. <laughs> We've just got a couple of minutes or something till first contact. I know, it's coming up, isn't it, after all these months of, an of anticipation. Now, tell me, Venus is going to go across the face of the sun. Is, is that all there is to it? Right, well, it happens because Venus is in an orbit closer to the sun than the Earth is. So every now and then, Venus passes in between the Earth and the sun. So if you were to make a line between the Earth and the sun, Venus literally passes through it. But why are they so rare? I mean, if Venus is inside us, you'd think it would happen every time it came around. That's right. I mean, it doesn't because, in fact, the orbit of Venus is tilted slightly compared to the Earth's. So it needs to lie exactly along that Sun-Earth line. And, in fact, normally it's slightly above it or it's slightly below it because of the tilt of the orbit. Right, so it only comes up, what's it, twice every 120 That's years? That's right. It occurs in pairs twice every 120 years. That's a bit right. like buses, really. That's right. You wait for edges and then you get two at the same time. <laughs> and where can you see the transit from? Right, well, you can see it all across Europe and across Africa. In fact, on the east coast of America, they'll see the transit, they'll see the end of it just after they wake up, and over towards Japan, they'll see the start of it just before the sun sets for them there. Oh, right, OK. Well, first of all, we're looking at Egypt, and I happen to know that first contact is going to be about 10 seconds away. Goodness right? me, OK. So we're looking for a black disk starting to creep against the sun now. One. Now, it should just be a tiny bite out of the edge, shouldn't it? That's right. Somewhere in the middle of that picture. I can't see anything at all. I can't see anything yet. Gosh, it's quite... It's quite... It's, it's, tense, quite, isn't it? it's nail biting. Because, of course, we see some let's, flickering. Let's have a look at the telescope here in Greenwich, because we might be able to see contact here, even though technically it's 13 seconds later. So let's have a look at the English telescope. I still can't see anything at all, can you? No, I can't yet. Well, of course, it's frustratingly slow, isn't it? I know, it? that's it. It's, it's going to take six hours for the whole event to happen, so it is a very slow process. And also, added into that, we've got this kind of slight shimmering of the edge of the sun due to the currents and the circulation in the atmosphere of the Earth. Gosh, it's quite tense. Can you imagine what it was like in 1769 when oh, they went goodness. to Tahiti? Absolutely. And they probably didn't know to within an hour when it was, you know, and, and watching like this for ages and ages, it must have been... That's right. Really, I mean, they must have been biting their toenails by they the end of that. They must have been. They must have been setting up their telescopes well in advance, yes. doing the projection methods and trying to see when this event was going to happen. Now, looking... Oh, is that it? Just there? Looking, you mean bottom left, about 8 o'clock? Yes? Yeah. There's a tiny, tiny dent. That looks like that's what it is. The trouble is that the edge isn't smooth, is it? No, it's not. It's got this kind of shimmering because of the seeing in, in, due to the Earth's atmosphere. It makes the image flicker slightly. Well, it that, could be there. That, it could be there. I think that definitely looks like it because we're looking for something which is about 1 30th of the diameter of the sun's disk in the sky. It's tiny, isn't it? It is tiny, that's right. I mean, in fact, Venus is about the same size as the Earth, but because the sun is about 109 times the size of the Earth, Venus looks very it looks small absolutely against tiny. It. I think I believe you now. I think that's got to be it. I think there definitely. Is, there is a tiny little bite at about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? 
That's right, eight o'clock. So imagine trying to time that precise second when that happened. It's extremely difficult. Yes, timing that to the second. I mean, I would now say, yes, it's happened, but it happened a minute or two That's ago. Right. You need to rewind the film in well, a way and then go yeah, Exactly. Back. <laughs> not, not easy to do in no. 1769. And what about Egypt? Can we let's see anything there? I can't see anything at all. And it was about now that the team in Egypt realised that error had crept in. They were looking at the wrong bit of the sun. Oh, well. If we look at this hydrogen alpha image coming from Egypt now, you can clearly see Venus on, encroaching on the disk there. Oh, hey! At the bottom. Hey, this is Egypt, and there it is, at the bottom. That's right. And it's a, it's a very, very smooth uh, semicircle it's very that sharp. we see. That's really good. Uh, why is it at the bottom? Well, it depends on what part of the Earth you're looking at the sun from. You might be, have your image rotated slightly. So if you're at a different latitude, you'll be, you'll be looking at the sun from a slightly different angle. Right. I can't, I can't do that in my head. <laughs> Three-dimensional geometry is beyond me. OK, so it really is at the bottom of the sun. That's so it's right. presumably going to go up from, yes. from, uh, from the bottom That's towards, right. the sort of, towards right. 2 o'clock or something That's like right. that. Yeah. OK. Oh, that's very bizarre. Well, thank goodness we found it. I know, it's there and it's happening right <laughs> now. <laughs> well, that was amazingly exciting. I must admit, I'm still high from it. With luck, they've been observing up in Much Hool, where Jeremiah Horrocks saw the very first one. How was first contact for you, Vanessa? Well, Adam, unfortunately, it was a little bit cloudy first thing. But considering it was actually raining here about an hour or so ago, we consider ourselves incredibly fortunate to see anything at all. As you can see here, the sun is beginning to come out and look much clearer now. The clouds are beginning to disperse and we're getting a better and better picture with every passing minute. So you can see the sun and you can see a black dot, can you? That's right, it's coming and going, but we're very, very optimistic for second contact. Keep observing. I hope you get a nice, good timing of the third contact. I want to know your reading. Thanks very much, anyway. Now we can go over to Egypt. Paul. Well, thanks, Adam. As you can see, we've come down from the rooftop area where our telescope is, and we're now here over by the bar. There was a hushed sense of anticipation before we actually had first contact. Lots and lots of people waiting very anxiously to, to see what was going to happen. But when the first contact was made, you could see all the smiles going around. And no matter what people were using to observe, and you could see...